Merci beaucoup, Madame la Présidente. Uh, très chers collègues, dear colleagues, I am of course in a very special situation today, but honored to be the commissioner designate for a portfolio for transport. And of course, I want to share with you a couple of my thoughts regarding this uh, very important portfolio for the European Commission in its next mandate. First of all, the benefits for EU citizenship, the freedom to live, work, study, and do business anywhere in Europe is one of the citizens value the most. Transport makes this possible. Mobility and transport are the backbone of the internal market and support the freedom of movement of citizens and goods. They connect people and help strengthen cohesion across the European Union and thus play a key role in its integration and development. We are in, in a new era excel with accelerated innovation and transformation, bringing many new challenges and opportunities. It will be my duty as Commissioner for Transport to work in close cooperation with the European Parliament as well as with the Council towards making these changes work for everyone. Today I'm seeking your approval, your trust and your support for making transport fit for a Europe that is sustainable, fair and prosperous. President-elect von der Leyen has signaled that a European Green Deal will be a key political priority for the new Commission. This deal cannot be complete without transport at its core. A European Green Deal must ensure that Europeans are able to enjoy affordable access to sustainable and smart mobility. The greening of mobility must serve our citizens, businesses and economy in the best way possible. As former chair of Environment Committee, I can tell you that the EU has fully delivered on its promise to build a comprehensive architecture for reducing greenhouse gas emissions. With the completion of the Clean Energy Package, we now have the most advanced framework that will enable significant emission, emissions reductions uh, up to 2030. This is not enough. By 2050, we want to be carbon neutral, and that needs additional efforts. I will work hard to reduce the environmental footprint of mobility and transport activities and make sure our actions further contribute to the reduction of carbon emissions and improve their quality. All of this must be an economic success if we want citizens to embrace it and the world to follow our lead. To this aim, I think uh, there are several uh, areas in which I see absolutely necessary to prioritize uh, actions. But first, I want to talk about a safe and secure transport. Today, we have the safest transport system in the world, but we must constantly improve our safety standards and remain one step ahead. Safety is paramount for all uh, transport modes. There cannot be any complacency here. Same for security, as safety and security are the two faces of the same coin. Looking at our safety performance, performance one sector stands out, roads. Even though Europe remains the safest uh, region in the world, 25,000 roads deaths per year, it's simply unacceptable. We should share the objective of halving the number of deaths and serial injuries uh, up to 2030 compared to 2020. I will uh, put all the resources available in convincing ministers, investors, and developers to internalize the safety pledge, pledge permanently, and I need you to support me in this quest. Then we need clean and sustainable mobility. A climate neutral economy by 2050 must see CO2 emissions from transport reduced by 90%. But if we continue with current measures, all we get is just 20%. So it's absolutely a need to channel our actions on three crucial areas. First, incentivizing the right consumer choices and low emission practices, then improving efficiency across the whole transport system, and thirdly, to increase the uptake of clean vehicles and alternative fuels. Reducing the allowances to airlines with the aim of eliminating them over time, it's part of my um, mission as it was entrusted, and extending the emission trading scheme to maritime sector, it's something which will bring a valuable change. In general, we should be the user, it should be the users who shoulder the cost of their trips, not society as a whole. 
However, pricing will only work if more sustainable alternative remains attractive, affordable, and available. Otherwise, change will be at the expense of disadvantaged groups or peripheral regions, which would be unacceptable. I want to promote mobility as a service, make alternatives to conventional private cars affordable, adjust infrastructure, and embrace smart and collaborative <laughs> solutions. We should start by eliminating unnecessary emissions. The absence of progress on a single European sky makes our flights unnecessarily long, resulting in more carbon emissions. I will push to make a fully developed single European sky finally happen. It is not only the skies that are grey, our cities are suffocated by congestion too. We owe it to our citizens to free their urban mobility and stop wasting their time and money. Overall, we must take all transport modes sustainable and for that we need not to only improve uh, our standards, but we must also ensure that clean mobility solutions are widely adopted and deployed. Therefore, I will support value chain partnerships with the industry as part of the European Green Deal. We should stop speaking about uh, uh, the antagonism between transport and climate change policies, and we should focus how to work together to improve and move things uh, quickly. I will work with the member states and private investors towards deploying a significant increase in publicly accept accessible recharging or refueling points. I want to promote the uptake of sustainable fuels across road, maritime and air transport. This will give the sector a real opportunity to make a quantum leap forward uh, towards decarbonization. Then I'm asked to ensure a smart mobility ecosystem. Being smart and sustainable goes hand in hand. We need to take full advantage of digitalization to make transport safer, cleaner, more efficient and more accessible. Citizens want to be a, fa a part of a faster moving world and they want to be connected to the cool stuff technology has to offer and they have the right uh, to, to be part of that. Integrated traffic, travel, safety apps in our cars as well uh, as other means of transport are just a few support features that can be provided to consumers, and I agree that legislation can accelerate their deployment and support the integration of mobility services behind the apps. For businesses, a more modern, multimodal logistic environment will save time and money and will reduce carbon emissions. A real market for digital solutions is emerging, and I want the EU to remain a leader from blockchain and digital mapping and tracking to connected and automated vehicles, planes and vessels. This is why it's important to boost research and innovation and make sure that conditions are right to deploy connected and automated mobility successfully. Innovative is a, uh, innovation is a collective effort, effort and I'm a true believer in working with industry for timely development. This is what I was pushing as chair of the industry committee and uh, I will continue to do so in my new role. Challenges do exist, jobs will be impacted, therefore I will prioritize investment in reskilling to keep, for example, the automotive regions thriving socially and economically. And now I'm getting to fair and inclusive mobility. For our trans transport sector workers, I want training on the skills the future jobs will require. I want retraining offered to those who keep the wheels turning today. Automation will, be, will mean huge changes, but it uh, must not come at the cost of human talent that Europe needs to stay ahead. 11 million people count on us for their jobs. We shall not disappoint them. I will support the Just Transition Fund built around their needs. Transport jobs must be attractive for everyone, especially for young people and young professionals whom we need to attract to the sector. I want to take the um, Women in Transport Platform initiative further and I want to see the potential of gender balance and gender mainstreaming thrive. I'm not stressing enough, freedom of movement is a right for every ci a single citizens of the EU, regardless of location, income, or special needs. Travelers with restricted mobility need to be able to move around with the same ease as everyone. Those in remote areas need to be better connected to our transport network, and everyone rightly expects to be protected in case something goes wrong. Europe has today a very comprehensive passenger's right framework, but we need to take this further. Now, if it, we talk about investment, because for all our projects we need uh, the right financing. Um, 
first I want to say that 2020 budget is very important because it's a bridge to the next multi-annual financial framework and it's essential for the continuity of our projects. Connecting Europe facility represents for me one of the my vo most valuable contribution as an MEP in this house. I was working with Dominique Riquet and Inessa Alassanders um, to succeed, to put in place the, mo the most important instrument for investment in transport, energy, and telecom networks. And we are now financing the completion of our core network, the missing essential links, which isolate our communities. I have opposed the cuts under the uh, current uh, multi-annual financial framework, and I'm committing in front of you that I will defend the budget for connecting Europe facility for the next financial framework. Um, transport infrastructure is vital for enabling a um, European defense strategy. Improved mobility for our troops and equipment should not be overlooked when we invest in infrastructure. And the dual use facilities for civilian and military purposes are a major opportunity for our union and should be a strategic choice. Um, thinking globally, the vision of the president-elect um, is one of a geopolitical commission. This is exactly what we need. We need Europe to maintain its uh, multilateralism um, in, uh, on the global stage. For transport, that means Europe needs to be a hub for all neighboring regions, but more importantly, for globally, global supply chains and passenger flows. And this is going extremely important for our competitiveness. Global trade needs a global level playing field. In transport, this means the chain uh, the chance to use our regulatory leadership to become a norm for global standards. Our competitive advantages can be reinforced in, uh, if we act properly in our international bodies like IMO and ICAO to take on board the benefits uh, of our success stories on safety, on security, on environment, on uh, fair competition. <coughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, balancing our ambition, ambitious commitments for um, climate change mitigation, for sustainability, with the growing needs for mobility, with uh, fair and inclusive transport, with social issues, and the competitiveness is going to be a challenge for all of us, and we need to work together on that. Um, I know how important it is, as being 12 years in this house, for you to work with a commissioner. I know how important it would be for a commissioner to build on the expertise and experience of the members of the European Parliament, and I'm committing to you that I will share from the very beginning with you ideas, projects, and we will work through the whole chain of producing legislation. Um, with these pledges and with this shared vision, um, I ask for your support today so that we can start a journey together. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup.